Selecting your first corals can be an overwhelming experience due to the fact that there's so many different types and they're all so different. I'm going to help you narrow it down with five corals that are perfect for beginners starting out in the reef aquarium hobby. Hi, my name's George and in this coral fish video, I'm listening to what so many of you guys have requested for after my last video on the top three corals that beginners should avoid. Well, then everybody wanted to know, well, what are the best corals for beginners? So here are my top five for all you newbies, and I'm gonna make sure to include at least one from every category of coral. I highly recommend every beginner starts out with some soft corals, so my first two on the list are gonna be softies. Number one, zoanthids. Zoanthids are one of the most popular soft corals in the hobby today. And I'm not surprised because they come in a wide variety of colors and sizes, so they can really accommodate any type of buyer. There's some that have designer names that will sell for like up to $100 per polyp, but all you beginners out there, don't worry. There's tons of color variations that are really, really beautiful that you can pick up for only a few bucks. Now, zoanthids don't need to be directly fed because they depend primarily on their zoanthelli but they tend to do best in moderate to high intensity lighting and low water movement. Now one of the reasons that they're such great corals for beginners is because they reproduce very quickly and they can be easily propagated. Now I have to say I've gotten so many emails and messages on my Instagram, follow me at coralfish12g, from people who've gotten so scared from my videos on the dangers of palytoxins. Essential to wear gloves when working with them. You know how I got these scars? I even had one guy message me who was like, hey man, what do I do? I have zoanthids in my tank, but I have a family at home. I have two kids and a wife and a dog to think about. I'm super scared that the palytoxins are gonna kill my family, like what do I do? So apparently I've scared so many people into either not getting zoanthids or just getting rid of their zoanthids. Which is a shame because zoanthids are such a great coral and there's really nothing to be that scared about when it comes to palytoxins. Zoanthids are not that dangerous. The chances of you getting uh, palytoxin poisoning are so low. The only ways that you can really get it is if you accidentally boil your zoanthids, which is from people boiling their rocks, which I just don't do that. Please just don't do that. Or if you are fragging them and you're just completely chopping them up and mucus is going everywhere. Do not cut them up like a chef from Benihana. Or if like when you're handling them, you get them too close to your mouth or your eyes. Just like really obvious things that you shouldn't do. Number two, toadstools. People always want corals with lots of movement, especially beginners. And one question I get a lot is what's a great soft coral for beginners that has a lot of movement that isn't a potentially invasive species? And the answer to this question is a leather coral called a toadstool. Now I personally love the green ones, but even the brown, pink, and yellow ones can also be very pretty and make awesome showpieces for new tanks. It's very hardy, you just have to be aware that this coral sheds every once in a while. So when that's happening, you either have to turn up your flow quite a bit, or you just gotta go in there and help remove the excess coat yourself. Now moving on to a couple of LPS corals that I think are great for beginners starting out in the hobby. Number three, blastomusas. Blastos are easy to care for because they require low flow and very low light, which means that they can be grown in a beginner's reef tank that doesn't necessarily have a very expensive high output light fixture. One reason that LPS corals are easier to care for than SPS corals is because they have much larger visible mouths. So corals like this are a lot easier to feed. They're extremely peaceful corals and can be found in some really amazing colors. Number four, the elegance coral, which I actually have as one of my main showpieces right here in this tank. There are tons of other great LPS corals out there for beginners, but the reason the elegance coral makes the list is because so many beginners want anemones for their coloration and movement. Look, got anemones, got a lot of anemones. And this coral is the most similar in appearance to an anemone, and it'll easily convince your guests that it is one. When I have friends come over that are checking out my tank for the first time, they'll always be like, oh, is that an anemone? And I'll admit it, I just say yes. Now for those of you that don't know, anemones can actually move around on their own. And one advantage that this coral has is that I'll show you right here, they won't move around because since they're LPS, 
stony corals, they're attached to a base that you can just place in the substrate wherever you want. They're amazingly tough corals and one of the hardiest LPS corals that you can get. Finally, number five. Montiporas. Now if you're really set on getting some stony or SPS corals and you've successfully kept LPS and soft corals before, then you're ready to try some Montes, which are generally considered to be one of the least demanding SPS corals. Montes come in a lot of different colors, growth patterns, and are easily adaptable to different lighting and current conditions, which makes them a great candidate for learning about stony coral propagation. Once established, they're very hardy and fast growing, and once you've mastered this SPS, you should definitely feel more comfortable moving forward in the SPS world. Now here are some general tips for all of you beginners out there buying coral. And I genuinely want you guys to learn from my mistakes and my experiences. I've been in the hobby now for almost 10 years. This is George. Um... And one of the biggest tips I can give you is to not impulse buy coral. Trust me, I know how hard it is to see a coral and instantly fall in love with it, but what's the point of buying it if you're just gonna take it home and watch it slowly die? That's more painful in my opinion than walking out of the store without it. Please start out with some easier to care for corals that are more forgiving while you learn the ins and outs of maintaining a reef tank. Like this video below if I gave you beginners some direction to head into when first buying coral. If you have any questions or you want me to cover a topic in the future, let me know in the comments section below. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Make sure to click the bell notification so you're notified when I release new videos. And check out a couple of these other videos here that I have listed specifically meant for beginners starting out in the saltwater aquarium hobby. Remember to keep those nitrates low guys, George out.